We're into weeks five and six of training for your first triathlon. You're a month down and hopefully you've got the bug already. Now you've had some time to build some fitness up over the three different disciplines. So now it's time to start progressing them further and thinking about the race course that you're going to be undertaking. It's time for part three of how to train for your first triathlon series. If your first triathlon is a super sprint or even a sprint distance triathlon, then there's little need to increase the total distance of your swim sessions by too much. If you're already up to around 1,000 meters or more in a swim session, then that'll probably do. Unless, of course, you have more time on your hands and you just want to, or you started with a good level of swimming fitness, then by all means, feel free to continue increasing. But with this being your first triathlon, the main aim is to be able to complete the distance comfortably. So your focus now needs to be on longer distance reps, gradually building up so that a single rep is the same distance as the race that you've entered, while still maintaining your two sessions per week. So for our sprint and super sprint distance viewers, an example session building up to this would be... Start off with a warm-up of 100 metres front crawl, followed by 100 metres of kick, so just using your legs. Then for the main set, two lots of 400 metres swim and finish it all off with a cool down of 100 metres pull, so just using your arms, and then 100 metres of choice swim, any stroke. That's 1,200 metres in total and just take a comfortable 20 to 40 seconds recovery between all of the reps. If your first triathlon is further, then we still have a little more progressing to do. It's essential that we build up your endurance to be able to cover the distance, as well as increasing the rep length in the same way. But we can, of course, do this more gradually because we're increasing the session length at the same time. So for our Olympic distance athletes and further, you want to maintain your two sessions per week with a session along the lines of a warm-up of 100 meters front crawl swim, followed by 100 meters kick, then a main set of 300 meters front crawl swim followed by 100 meters front crawl pull three times through and then a cool down of 200 meters choice swim that's a total of 1600 meters and just take a comfortable rest of 20 to 40 seconds between all the reps Now to the bike, and it's time to start thinking about the course of your first triathlon. If possible, do a little research into the route and the terrain. You can usually find this sort of information on the event website or speak to someone who's done it before, and then you can start to tailor your training to suit that course. Essentially, you want to be as prepared as possible. If it's a hilly course, for example, then you may want to start including more hills into your rides. Perhaps trying to find hills that match the gradients of those on the course. Or even better, if you live locally to the event, then you can start practicing the course in your training. Now you're completing rides of around 80 minutes in duration, twice per week. But again, if you're doing a super sprint or a sprint distance triathlon, there's little need to progress this much further. Yes, it'll make your endurance better and help with your fitness, but it's time to start focusing on the distance. So if you're doing a sprint distance, for example, that's 20K on the bike. Therefore, you can start tracking how long it takes you to ride 20K and when it starts to feel a little easier. That's right, but any extra miles you do do is a bonus. But of course, if you are entered for a longer event, then you will need to do those extra miles. So sticking with our gradual progression, build your two rides per week up to an hour and a half in the fifth week and up to an hour 40 in the sixth week. We understand it can be difficult trying to fit in a longer ride during the week. So it might be worth considering making one of your rides longer if you can't do both. Now, I know this does break the 10% rule, but just be sensible and don't do too much too soon. Do a little research into the run course too and adapt your training in the same way that we suggested for cycling. Now we're up to around 40 to 45 minutes of running twice per week. So you've built up a good level of fitness. So you're well on your way to preparing for your first triathlon. For our super sprint and sprint distance viewers, you've probably already covered the distance required. So now it's time to introduce brick sessions. And this is simply a term used for practicing running off the bike in preparation for race day. 
Start off short with these brick session runs. Just do a 10 to 15 minute run of one of your bike sessions per week to begin with. You'll likely report the feeling of dead and heavy legs and that's totally normal. But in doing these, it will gradually get easier with time. To really make the most of these sessions, you can practice your transitions by making sure you've got your running kit laid out. Then you can practice your dismount from the bike, going straight into the running off. Now you may have seen or heard of some pretty fancy transitions, but there's really no need to, especially for your first triathlon. Just keep things simple if you want to. Just slowly come to a stop, dismount from your bike, and then work your way to your running shoes. So this is going to require you to do three runs per week. So one 40 to 45 minute run, one 30 minute run, and then just a short 10 to 15 minute run off the bike. Then for our longer distance athletes, we should progress the runs to 50 minutes in week five and 55 minutes in week six. Of course, brick sessions are also really useful for the longer distances. So simply shave 10 to 15 minutes off one of your weekly runs and then include it as an additional brick session run off one of your bikes. This phase is all about preparation. So start to look beyond just training and getting fitter. Take a look at the course and see if you can train specifically for that terrain. And practice running off the bike because it is an odd sensation and one that you'll definitely want to try before race day. If you haven't done so yet, you can click on the globe to subscribe. And if you missed the earlier videos in this series, you can catch up on them just here. And if you want some more advice on how to practice running off the bike, then there's a great video for that just here.